accounts into stockholders' equity section and balance sheet. And balance sheet, you see, all of this is just the equity section, okay, not including asset or liability. We would start from paid in capital. Paid in capital, remember, in Chapter 12, we talked about preferred stock issuance, common stock issuance. You see I underlined that common stock issuance, originally there was 6,300,000 uh, shares issued to the market. This is the number of shares that company actually issued. And the line before the 60, the part that I underlined there, the 20 uh, million shares, the 20 million shares is the ceiling, the total number of shares that company is able to issue. But so far, as of now, they only issue 6,300,000. Okay, now, after buying back the stock, remember we bought back some of the stock, we resell them back. Overall, there's still 300 shares that company purchased back still withheld in the company. So this 300 shares times, remember, the market price, the, uh, the cost that they used to purchase, this total 1,500 is a deduction toward equity account. And treasury stock is always listed the very last. We list paid in capital, externally generated fund, retained earnings, the internally generated fund based on providing service, providing goods. Then the third line, if company do purchase back some of the stock, to the third beneath uh, retainer means. And Treasury stock altogether, the 300 shares represents the shares that companies still withheld in the business. They can decide to reward to their employees. They can also decide next year to sell it back to the market. Again, so if they do sell it back to the market, we will be comparing the cost with that time to market price. There's premium, it's reported here. But all together right now, they still have 300 shares um, and by the price that they used to purchase, uh, $5, all together this 1500 is a deduction toward equity account. Because they took back some of the shares that they issued out, took it back, so it has opposite direction toward the paid in capital section. Now the total outstanding stock here, I wanted to point out that outstanding stock is different from issued stock. The issue stock has a record of all together from day one, the starting point of the business to now, what was the total number of shares that had been issued before, 6,300,000. However, this may be different from what's really there now. Okay, so if Treasury stock and company do purchase 300 back, this 300 would not be affected there because outsiders still need to know what is the record of the total issuance before. The record of total issuance before is 6,300,000, but right now what's really there in the market is after subtracting the 300 shares. This is the part that's really out there in common shareholders' hands. Okay, but upper part, the underlying part, is the, the number of shares that has ever been issued out to the market. And that is a record that will always be kept there. Then if you see treasury stock, then you know that outstanding stock is different from issued stock. Part that's really outstanding there in the market is after subtracting the treasury stock. So in case that company did not buy back any number of shares before, then altogether the number of issued shares is 6,300,000 shares, and outstanding shares is also 6,300,000 shares. But if they did buy back the stock, which is reported below retained earnings, then you know that 300 is no longer there in the market. So what's actually outstanding? The number outstanding is different from the number issued. Issued is always a historical record of the total number of shares that has ever been issued. These two numbers may be different if companies did buy back some of the stock. Okay, any questions? 